We are. Hello, guys. We're just talking again. Just talking. This I should call my channel Just Talk. Me and my partner, we're sitting around talking about stuff again. Went out to get some McDonald's. I'm a, I, I feel like just harking right now on immigration, especially Latinos, because I think that's our biggest threat. I, I know our biggest threat is politicians and white supremacy as a as a country in terms of of a whole system and in, in, in head, you know, of household and all that kind of stuff. And but no, I mean we have a people now that's taking part in this that we think they are innocent. And I've been looking at that. A lot of people we do. We think that these people are innocent. They um they looking for a way of life. Because they have a benevolent face and a benevolent tone. I would be benevolent too if I was getting rich off of somebody else's labor and wealth. Uh, and all I had to do was cross a line and I, my children could become who they are. I would be looking benevolent also if I could take over somebody else's legitimized claims. I would, I would actually be... I would actually be um, benevolent also if um, I could go to somebody else's house or system and become first in line. Why not smile? So, you, you know, I don't know if we're really looking at this. You know, me and my boy here, we was talking about why it's taking black people so long to wake up and understand what's going on with us right now. I mean, it's actually a soft genocide and it's a war on black people's life and political and social, on black people's protection, on black people's um, access avenue, on black people's safety. And they're using these groups, especially Latino Mexicans, you know, and people from South America. But my partner was just saying, he was saying that the media has a lot to do with it, which we know that, right? But we yeah, and we trying to talk to our own people, and they don't hear us. They lost, y'all. And I, and I agree with feeling the advice showing them. They saying our people just ain't going to make it. Some of us ain't going to make it. Some of y'all black people that may come across this channel, or maybe out there, you, you, some of y'all ain't gonna make it because you're not paying attention. This is real. This is not a play thing. It's not a game to watch your home and all you work for in your life being given to someone else without your voice being raised. You're not even raising your voice. We got politicians. We ain't. We should have signs. You got a Mexican, I think, running the NAACP. As a matter of fact. Right, George? Yeah. You know, but if you want to talk about it, you can speak up a little louder. Yeah. But, um, I mean, um, yeah, I just wanted you to be able to, they can hear you. Yeah. But, uh, so, um, I'm harking on that, guys. I don't mind doing that. In the McDonald's line tonight, we went to McDonald's, and we saw, like, y'all got to be careful who y'all giving y'all money to. These little organizations and stuff that be taking up money, that a lot of them are giving illegal immigrants our money to for DACA. DACA has limbs where it's asking for money. McDonald's holding up two women and child asking you to give a donation for separated children. But black people were separated from their children going to damn prison under a bill Joe Biden implementing through the House of Representatives. Black people being separated from our children by the police shooting uh, black men in their fucking back. Ooh, excuse my language. I mean, I don't use to do that. But I'm just being real with you. So I, I'm, I'm not giving my money to no organization that's going to support people coming to my home illegally to remove me from the identity from my identity of success. 
I'll be damned. I'm not doing it. And y'all do it. Y'all ignorant. Don't do that. And I'm not trying to offend nobody. Because we do say God is love. And we do supposed to love people. The Bible preaches to us. And everything of that nature. We understand Christianity. But this is war. And the Bible said in a war. You are not to feed the enemy. This is a real war. Every time I go to a black per black our towns, I see us in destitute. We in full destitute in dire situation. I live out in Alpharetta, Georgia, one of the richest places. Mexicans has acquired communities out there. Well, affordable communities where they're now buffering themselves like white folks by the thousands. They're buying gas stations on the corners of white businesses and white um, development and white community. Not you. They are. White people would rather have them as constituency or maybe even sort of like a little slave there. Whatever. I don't know what they're really totally doing with them because they really don't like them. A lot of them don't. But I'm telling you that the white liberals have decided that this is going to be the future. Latinos that are that are that are that are white um, Hispanic, and it's in the way of black folk. And we, I'm a hark on this. Their children. One of one of the Mexican asked my son, our son. He said he asked my son, our son, if you flip a coin, if I flip this coin heads or tails then Mexicans are better than black folks. In my community, where we have beautiful condos, apartments, they're driving trucks, that big tires on them like white men, owning companies. You drive down the street in my community, you can see where everybody got trucks, construction site written on the side of the truck that are Mexican people. Some of them can't even speak English. Some of them got passports. Some of them got Mexican ID. They just got in from the border. They haven't been here long. They have apartments and businesses. They came in the country and they crossed the border illegally. And they're already in Georgia, Atlanta, in Texas, already in Baltimore, already in Mississippi even. They're already in our country. They're not forced to take the vaccine either. Really. This is a, this is a, 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 they're building a social construct now for us to believe that they actually belong here. That's what the, the power source is doing, which is the Democrat Party. The party that we are married to as black people. They want uh, our minds. They're controlling your mind. They're telling you these people are supposed to be here. You're supposed to feel sorry for them. Their country is in shambles. Their government is this. They are poor. No, they're not. They're not no poorer than Pookie and Ray Ray and Miss Anna in the hood that can't get a roof on her house. They ain't no poorer than us than we over here in our neighborhoods with only one house on the street and everything else is abandoned. Everybody living in Section 8 apartments. They ain't no poorer than that. Okay? So don't you think that you up here feeling sorry for people and they up here running, buying donut shops and egg and coffee shops and salad expresses in the white communities. They live in your community for a minute. Yeah, they done took over California. So black people, y'all need to really pay attention. And I think we should be more sophisticated in our argument in our um, debate in terms of this and I'm so sorry that we guys are experiencing this on this level but at, at, again we rise we are sleeping giant you know and that's something you want to say no mm -mm. I mean it's a good night but I came out my house y'all and to see all of that it, it just I want to love people. I was raised to, and I want to, and I am going to love people. But they're stealing from us. And they play that game like they quiet. They don't want to say nothing. They don't speak English. 
That's a game. That's a culture thing that they've gotten in order to seem soft-spoken. Yeah, and the scriptures does say welcome your enemy. But the scripture says, what does the scripture say about somebody who's a criminal, who's doing an illegal act? They are illegal. They're breaking the law. I'll be, I'll be kind. But I'm not going to embrace anybody who's coming illegally and against me. And where our tax dollars are supporting them. What was it two years ago? We spent $38 billion to support illegal immigrants. Yeah, I don't like that number. And we got too many black people and veterans and on the street, uh, poor people on the street that's American citizens. Why aren't they spending that money on us first? Take care of home first. Yeah. Yeah, and I tell you, I some it is some white people who are even feeling this. Like what my pop my partner was saying. It's some white people who feeling this, man. But I'm not worried, really worried about that like that. But the American, they're in the bracket of a black person's income. So they locked in that feeling. Some of these white people that we met can't even get um, clientele as a plumber or a construction worker or so forth because of this. This disease of intrusion, this disease that's happening to all of us. But like, like he said, I'm not supporting it. I'm really not going to support it. Because I'll be a fool. Y'all, they come in here to take what we have. And I will say this right here. They are breaking the law. They know they're breaking the law. Now they realize it. They're being quiet about it. They're taking part in it. They realize what they are doing. They're talking about black people behind your back. They are smiling in your face. And they smile more than white people to you. Because they actually think and know that most black people don't think Mexicans are prejudiced. So they, they get away with it a lot easier. There are some are very nice. And that's what makes it hard because people can be nice. And you can be nice to people. But this is not about being nice. This is about what belongs to you. And I don't think black folks know what belongs to us. But it's time to rise up. And the only way we're going to do it is to come together and cut the check.